Hey everybody, do you know what French is for rash? It's vlog day 445. Breakfast on the go, I guess. <laughs> That was a good climbing session. Only lasted like an hour, not even quite an hour and a half. Ready to eat some food, but it was really good. I, I really enjoy it. Got to keep, got to keep working out. Met some more staff. They're really nice here. And then yeah, I'm gonna go get coffee and try to write. Writing is what's hopefully on the ticket, on the docket today. I do need to get some admin stuff done, but that's every day. So carve out time for writing, then get that stuff done. <laughs> Protein hit. I haven't, I haven't had a kebab in like two months. I don't know, it's been a long time. Ooh, fed, ready to write. So one of the big things that I've been struggling with is carving out time to write because I felt like I really, I do have a lot of stuff to get done. But the fact is that writing takes like this higher level of concerted energy that I should definitely spend first on writing and there's so much other stuff I can get done by zombie work basically, stuff that you can get done without spending that much mental energy on. Basically need to improve my priorities a little bit and do the admin stuff when I'm tired and don't have the gusto. Goodbye train. Perfectly timed to sound like <laughs> you guys think if I should do, with the one that's full, if I should do a full giveaway, if I should develop them and turn them into postcards and give you all a postcard. Everybody's a winner that way. But nobody gets to develop, you know, I don't know. We'll see, let's have a discussion. I don't know, it seemed like you guys liked the, hearing my soundtrack earlier. Welcome back to the old department. My phone actually died while I was writing, which, it's crazy because I wasn't even really using it, obviously. But here we are. I got a fair amount done with Agnar's box and I'm hitting this part where you kind of like, basically the middle portion has to just get shredded and all of the good stuff from that I just pack into the end needs to be extended a little bit. And it's really actually hard to figure out, okay, how do we take this part and this part and not lose this part, but move this part up to where this part is and combine things, if that makes any sense. So making some progress, Jeff, uh, don't worry. And things are gonna be a lot different. For those of you who beta read, Agnar's box already. I made a mistake in letting a whole bunch of people beta read it before I went through development. And then after development, I was like, wow, yeah, there's a lot of work to do here. So uh, making some good progress there. Now, I was given some more Mimolette by somebody on my Versailles tour last week, and I'm gonna make Mimolette nachos again. I wasn't even thinking about it until somebody brought it up. And it's only gonna cost me whatever it takes to make the guac and the pico de gallo. I'm gonna make some more. I'm gonna see if I can find some peppers. You guys don't need to see the whole creation process again, but there are a couple of pointers that from the last time that I made uh, Mimolette nachos that I think will improve your Mimolette nachos if you ever decide to make Mimolette nachos. Just because it's redundant, might as well just gotta finish it off. I met a fairness lady in the store who suggested I try this place for some spicy peppers, so we'll see if that pans out. A bit overpriced, but hopefully they got something. Dude had one type of spicy pepper, which is all he said was this is a spicy pepper. So uh, I will, I, my hands are full but I'll show you what it is here in a second and you guys can take wax in the comments at identifying what kind of spicy pepper it is. Hopefully it's good. We're about to find out. I also bought myself some strawberries as a snack to hold me over because I have enough time to cook this and then I go get my laundry. I'm not gonna be able to eat it until after I have a phone call with a lawyer and like, an hour, and I don't know how long it's gonna last, so I figured strawberries would hold me over, and it'd make you guys happy to see that I'm having some fruit, maybe? Considering that like all I've had to eat today is a kebab, and then way too much coffee. My, my head kind of feels funny. So, 
Pepper test. All right. Oh, it smells like it's got a little spice. But it smells more like a bell pepper than a spicy pepper. I bet we're about to find out after. Whoa! Come back here, a little bit of pepper. Saying that, of course, it's gonna be like the spiciest thing I've ever eaten before. It's basically a skinny bell pepper. With like a little bit of spice. A little bit of spice. Problem with living in France. Not a lot of spicy things. That whole grocery store, nothing. Nothing. The lady that was helping me though, she was really nice because I asked her, I was like looking around and there was a lady and I was like, do you know if they have any spicy peppers? And she was like, yeah. She kept coming back and giving me more ideas. This is one of the ideas. The other one was one of the Chinese markets. There are a couple of Chinese markets just north of my grocery store. So I'm gonna have to go give that a try next time. But we'll still chop this up and put it in the salsa and I'm sure it'll actually add something delightful to it. I also didn't get the canned tomatoes this time. So hopefully that wasn't a mistake. We'll find out. We're experimenting. Okay, now it gets interesting because it has seeds. There's almost spice in that too. I'm feeling like I'm walking into a trap here. This is gonna end up being way worse than I expect, isn't it? Keep trying it, expecting it to get spicy. Like it has the promise of being really spicy, and it just doesn't come through. The seeds are a little bit spicier. It'll add something nice, it'll add something nice to the salsa. And there's a little bit of spice in there, for sure. <laughs> I didn't even finish cutting this before the alarm went off for my laundry, so. The pico de gallo components are all cut, and then I'll make guac and the chicken when I come back, and then we'll actually eat it after this phone call, so back to sitting and waiting for laundry. Whilst we do our laundry, some thoughts from yesterday. I didn't really have a lot of time to reflect, at least on the vlog, uh, about my time in Paris Chaise, but it was really nice. And it's funny because my mom, all growing up, my mom loved going to cemeteries, which is kind of weird. But it also explains my sister's affinity for skulls and stuff like that. I kind of, I, I mean, like maybe I get it now. I'm not sure, but there's, I was standing in front of Jim Morrison's grave in particular because he died so young, maybe because he's an American. Uh, he's not separated by much more than a generation from me. Just looking at that and thinking, man, I don't know, it felt peaceful, felt restful, but also felt, you know, kind of profound. As we walked through the cemetery, there was a theme that you noticed, like the majority of graves went relatively untouched. A lot of them were well-maintained. There are a number that are not well-maintained at all. And then there are some that are just totally loaded up with flowers and candles and other things like that. And you can see that some people are really missed even in death that have been dead for hundreds of years, like Chopin or, you know, Oscar Wilde's been dead for over a hundred years now. And others that, you know, have just faded into obscurity. Their names aren't even legible on their headstones anymore. It's not going to be that much different for us, you know. The majority of us won't be missed. And like the whole idea that they have like 30 year leases on the plots in Père Lachaise and if you don't renew them or your family doesn't renew them, obviously if you're dead you can't renew them, but if they're not renewed, you know, then they dig you up and move you somewhere else and use that plot for somebody new. And just that lack of permanence to it in death because of the sheer demand for space. I don't know, it just helps to put everything into kind of that context of like, yeah, it's coming for all of us and there's nothing you can do about it. And it actually makes me feel kind of better to approach that and think about it than to try and ignore it. This is turning into like follow up vlog. I also realized I never really explained when I was talking about leaving Paris, at least in the title of that one vlog a few days ago when we were on our way out to the countryside. One of the things that I forgot to follow up on was the fact that I love leaving the city and going on trips, getting out of here. Because you need a break for one, like the city is pretty nuts sometimes, so it's nice to get a break, but because I love coming back. Like coming back to Paris is always a confirmation for me that I definitely should be here. And actually leaving, like it was fun to be in the countryside, but it's also a confirmation for me like, man, I love living in the city. I love living in Paris. I love going in the countryside. I love making trips like that. I enjoy being back here though. I really, really love living in Paris. And it's for me, leaving and coming back is both both acts end up serving as a confirmation that this is exactly what it's supposed to be. One of the major benefits of having a butcher in your grocery store is that he cut the chicken for me, so now I can just fry it up. Should be great. Had a good talk with my dad. Now it's time to finally make these nachos. That phone call uh, was late and long. It was good. I can tell you guys about it more later. There's some still questions looming. Ties into some other stuff, uh, but I figured since I'm gonna mention it, and we are gonna have to talk about it at some point, I'll just kind of sort of bring it up now and then we'll talk about it soon. One exciting thing though from today, we crossed the 1800 subscriber mark today, which is great, thank you. For those of you who just recently subscribed, welcome. I hope you enjoy whatever it is that you came here for. Hopefully it's me. And then, yeah, we'll see where we go from here.
All right, now while the chicken simmers and uh, the spices get spicier, the one thing that I really wanted to show you guys that made a big improvement the second time I made this was actually how I prepared the mimolette. Last time I tried to crumble it up and spread it around, it didn't really work very well. It didn't melt evenly. It tasted really good, but the better way, since it's a hard cheese, is actually just to shave off strips and then put that on top, which is pretty amazing. Watch. <laughs> So you can see the coverage I got here, not bad, considering how little cheese I actually used. Nemo, it's expensive though, and even though it was given to me, I don't want to waste it. I want to get like two, two nacho runs out of this, so, all right, <laughs> it smells so good. Anyways, that's my big suggestion. If you're gonna make mimolette nachos, just shave it off. Obviously, if you have a grater, I'm sure that would work great. Sorry, and I think it turned out really well. And my guac was amazing, and I think the pico is actually really good too. They've both been sitting in the fridge, stewing in their own deliciousness, so hopefully they're extra good here in a minute. But that is effectively that. <laughs> Thank you.